In today's age, sometimes we come across topics that are so esoteric, people have become comfortable with throwing these topics into the category of science fiction and even conspiracy theory. Where there is a lack of understanding, there is a lack of belief. You see, skepticism is not just about doubt or disbelief. It is about the investigation that leads to a better understanding. But most people don't do this. They base their beliefs on what is possible and impossible from their understanding. If I told you that teleportation technology does indeed exist, is it such a crazy thing to believe? I mean, right now, the majority of you can pull out a handheld device, take a photograph and store it without film, mind you, and then send that photograph through the air to someone else's handheld device on the other side of the planet almost instantly. We've already taken for granted the fact that we have been able to send information and energy through wires. So when you look at the space program, which has only been around for about 60 years, within that time they have already sent unmanned machines to Mars and beyond. Rovers that move along its surface taking photographs that are then sent across space back to Earth. Now the reason I bring all this up is because there are now plans to have manned missions to the Red Planet. Colonization. And based on the information that has already been given on space and Mars, this should raise some red flags. So we are going to explore this idea. And I am going to show you some things that may cause you to raise an eyebrow at our space program. As we teeter on the very border of science fiction and reality. Okay, folks, there's a lot to discuss, so I'm going to get right into it. NASA has decided that they would now make plans for a manned mission to Mars. Now, understand that this organization loves to pretend like they only know so much. See, this is all for public consumption. They know everything they need to know and then some. And they've known for quite some time. They know what's on the moon, they know what's on Venus, and they know what's on Mars. They know. NASA was formed in 1958, and just seven years later, they were already sending spacecraft to do a flyby of Mars to collect data. This was the Mariner 4 spacecraft launched in 1964. This took a lot of planning and funding, and on top of this, not only did they have to build a very large rocket, they had to build an entire launch system for this to be successful. And they did in an amazingly short period of time. This should tell you that missions to Mars has been the objective since NASA's inception. And something tells me that the moon missions were nothing more than a series of tests and the real mission has always been Mars. Now I have discussed the constellation Orion and its relationship to ancient structures found both here on Earth and Mars, namely the pyramids of Giza, and the volcanic structures of Olympus Mons. This is or will be the SLS, or Space Launch System, Orion. Yes, this will be a multi-stage rocket larger than the Statue of Liberty, the most powerful rocket NASA has ever built. And the components of this will be shipped by the Pegasus Barge. This is basically a transport for the SLS to carry it from the construction site to the launch site. Interestingly enough, Pegasus is also the name given to a secret project carried out by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, in which few claim have already sent men to Mars via Tesla teleportation, which seems highly unlikely, but not impossible. For all we know, 
they may have been very successful developing Tesla technology enabling them to do this. The truth of the matter is, if organizations such as NASA want to travel the stars more efficiently, teleportation technology may become a necessity. Because here's the problem. When you leave Earth, you are now entering a realm where your life is in danger at all times. And one of the main issues is radiation. The amount of radiation a person gets in one year here on Earth is equivalent to about 19 hours in space. And it is equivalent to about five days on Mars. Don't let NASA fool you. Just because someone like Peggy Whiston can stay in space for over 500 consecutive days does not mean she has not received a good dose of radiation. The fact is, she is an older woman, and older people can take larger doses of radiation compared to younger people. Not only that, but she and the other record breakers were on the space station, not in deep space. So not only do you have to find a way to shield astronauts from deep space cosmic radiation given off by the sun and other astral bodies for a year's worth of travel, but when you get to Mars, you now have to go underground because its atmosphere is so thin that it cannot filter out all the radiation that is coming in. They tell us that its atmosphere is about 100 times thinner than the Earth's and it is mostly carbon dioxide. So you're not going to be able to hang around outside for long anyways. That's the first problem. But they do have plans to send multiple crews with multiple missions. At least two missions per year when they get this thing started. And at the rate they are going, the first launch will probably happen before 2030. So maybe their initial efforts will be towards building a base. Now, even if you get to Mars and are somehow successful at constructing a base there, how do you solve the problem of gravity? You see, Mars has 38% the gravity of Earth. So unless the problem is resolved, no one will be able to stay there for very long. One of the first things that happens when you leave Earth's gravity is that you lose bone density and continue to lose it the longer you stay in space. You begin to lose the alignment of the muscle tissue. Your body basically begins to turn into mush. And some of these astronauts come back with permanent damage to their vision as a result amongst other things. They have however been able to develop exercises and other methods to slow down this degeneration. But they have not been able to develop anything to stop it. Aside from all the technical and biological issues that they are going to have to deal with, they are going to have to seriously address the psychological issues of their crew members. These astronauts are basically going to be locked up in a prison for about a year, only to land and be released into a nightmare. And once you do arrive, do you just stay there? Stationed in what's left of the spacecraft? Do they have a way for you to get back safely? Another year in prison. I'm telling you, you've got to have some big balls to volunteer for this. Or maybe, maybe, Mars is not what we think. Maybe there are already people there, human and non-human, including animals. Maybe there are already bases in a breathable atmosphere. We can only go on what they tell us and what we can see in images coming back from their rovers. I know that sounds far-fetched, but scientists have already suggested that it is likely that Mars was once very similar to Earth and may very well have supported life at one time. Which brings up a very interesting theory that is becoming more truth than fiction as time goes on. And that is the theory that the Mars we see today is the result of a massive nuclear cataclysm. You see xenon and krypton, yes krypton, these are both on the periodic table, they are noble gases, have been discovered on the Mars surface in high levels. And the only time you see these levels of xenon and krypton on Earth is after you drop a hydrogen bomb. And in the case of Mars, it is theorized that there were at least two of these explosions. One at Cydonia Mensa, and the other at Galaxius Chaos. Which both happen to be very close to Olympus Mons and the face on Mars. I mean, looking at this image, does this really look like a set of volcanoes to you folks? 
know that the government has not overlooked this theory. They take it very seriously because Mars is what you would get after a global nuclear holocaust. You have the stripping away of the atmosphere and the oxidation of the soil which gives it that red color. The same color you get when you look at the deserts of Earth from space. You also have impact glass that was formed in the impact craters of Mars, which you tend to get from a bomb being detonated in the air instead of on the ground. There are other theories that suggest that this could have happened naturally from meteors or explosions in space impacting Mars, but they are concerned. Because if this was the result of a bombing, the question is, did the Martians destroy themselves or was it an alien force? It's going to be interesting to see how this all unfolds. The pieces of this puzzle are coming together and slowly but surely we will discover the truth. And hopefully that truth will help us to answer questions we have about our solar system, Earth, and our human origins.